Hey guys, so today I wanted to kind of make a chart of my alcohol markers. I just recently bought a set of 72 Prismacolors. I have about 40 Copics and I also have my Chameleon. So I figured this is the perfect way to do this because I've seen other artists do it and it's the best way to know what colors you have and what, I guess, which one they kind of give out. So this is the box that I got. And unfortunately the case is really poopy. It's not great for actually storing them because they always fall apart. So I'm just going to show you guys. There they are. And if I hold them in any other angle, they're just going to fall and go all over the place. So I'm going to put them next to me on the desk. That way it's going to be a lot easier to map the colors. And I figure I'm going to start with the Prisma colors because I have way more of these. And uh, I'll just do some close-ups. And I guess I'll comment on maybe not each one of them, but I'll let you guys know what I think. Okay, so I took out the first row of colors. And the first impression on these... Well, I'm not too crazy about the sticker that is around the marker because the Copics, it's actually printed on top. But the problem with these ones, if you get them shipped from, let's say, Amazon and it's in the winter, the sticker starts actually coming off a little bit. So I had to push some of the stickers back in because it was, I think, minus 10 only. It was only minus 10. It wasn't even our coldest day. And it was outside for about two hours until I got home and the sticker was already starting to come out, so I don't want to think what would have happened if these were out for longer or if it were in an actual colder day. That's, that's a little worrisome, so be careful when you ship these to colder areas. All right, so the colors I'm starting with are kind of yellowish oranges. <laughs> that's, that's a weird way to say it, but so here's the brush side, which is on the squiggly line, and the thin one is the nib. I guess the small one. And that's Angel in the background, so if you don't know who Angel is, it's, he's not an angel at all, he's kind of a, a, bit, a bit of a brat. So, let's start with PB23. Okay, very bright color. 3131 is here. Seventeen, eighteen, I mean, my first impression is that these are pretty good colors and I really like the pigments. I mean, at first it was a little little light and I was worried that maybe all of them would be too bright but as you see the, the the colors are absolutely gorgeous and I am I can already tell this is going to be my Michelangelo orange right there unless of course oh maybe maybe PB6 I think PB16 is my Michelangelo orange <laughs> all right let's try the next one so I think we're going to be moving towards reds but I don't remember the exact order I put them in so let's let's go for it so it turns out I made a mistake on this color here. That's the wrong one because I have it again down here. It's supposed to be 170 instead of 127. So I'm just going to fix that this way. And 170. And on with the coloring because it was a little weird everything was kind of like a beige brown and then suddenly there was a purple that was extremely random all right so I'm going to start with 13 thought I made another mistake. I was like, why? Why is this happening? But no, we're on the right track, guys. On the right track. The colors are gorgeous. 11. What I don't like about these, I just realized right away, so the color names are on the side, but the there's no name here. It's just the, the code. I think the chameleons have the color and the code on top, and I think it's the same thing with the Copics, but we'll double check once once we're there. So this is 11. I 
I can tell this is going to be the anime skin tone. This is a little too pink, and this is, I think this is the good color. Now to the infamous 170 that I mixed up totally. I'm going to have to fix that. 65. Ooh, that's, that's a nice chocolatey color. This one is Terracotta, 82. Ooh, I like that one. And then 61, which is kind of a darker of the bunch. Ooh, very rich. The brushes on these are absolutely fantastic. I love the brushes. The ones on the Chameleons are a little more stiff. This one is definitely close to the Copics. All right, next row. Okay, I think now we're going into more of the reds and some of the pink. This is number here, and then this one. I think this is a very red red. Ooh, I like that. I like really rich colors. I don't know why. So this is probably going to be my Raphael red. I'm already naming them based on my turtles. I don't. What is this actually called? This one is called. Okay, crimson red. From now on, you are dubbed. Raphael Red. <laughs> this is a nice rich pink. This is, mm, I think it's too dark for a Kirby. This, the PB11 might be good for a Kirby, I think. Now we're going to 169. This is kind of like a dirty pink, I think. No, not even. What is that? A Tuscan Red. It's like a brownish red. And then PB1. Where are you? You are called Process Red. Don't even know what very pink though. It's almost like a deep bubblegum, deep bubblegum color. It seems to be lighter. So I don't know why they, the color, the order that I took here was exactly from their website. So I don't know why it goes like darker, lighter, darker, lighter, but it seems to work. Actually, I like this a lot. Still not a Kirby. I think it's kind of in between these two for a Kirby. I'm going to go into seven. This one is called, well, this one is magenta, so it should be purplish. There we go. Pinkish purplish. 55 is a very bubblegumish. This one's fuchsia, so even more purplish. No, not even. Just a very bright color. Nice. And then 133. This one's very pale, and it is deco pink. Very bright. This one reminds me of the first color that we just put down, the equivalent of the, of the yellow. All right, next row. Of course, being the airhead <laughs> that I am, I skipped... PB53 for some reason when I was entering all the numbers. So I expect more of this <laughs> from me just because sometimes I really am an airhead. So I think now we're going to go into purples and blues. This one is the, I'm going to move the paper this way. This is the lilac. Very pretty. And then we have dark purple. Now I'm worried. Now I'm like, hmm, am I, am I going to mess up the number of the colors? So I'm, I'm double checking each one. Now this one is called Violet Mist. I expect this, yes. I definitely expected it to be a light color. And where are you? This might be my Donatello one. Nope, a little too purple. So this one is way too dark for a Donatello. Or maybe not, so I'll, I'll keep an eye on this. Maybe as it dries, it's going to take on a kind of different tint, but for now, it feels like it's a little too dark. This one is Cerulean Blue. Every time I say the word Cerulean, I think of Sailor Moon. And which one's this one? True Blue. This could work as my Leonardo Blue. Actually, I think this... This is probably going to be my Donatello one. Hopefully that is right. I don't know if you guys will be able to see exactly the color, so I'm going to try and, as much as possible fix the settings on the camera, hopefully, and to, to make them match the paper as much as possible so that you can get a good impression of the colors. 127 is called Imperial Violet. I just love some, some of the... Oh, wrong end. That's... <laughs> Like, why is it so, so rough? Ooh, maybe, hmm, I'm not sure. 
Imperial Violet could be it. And then Ultramarine. It's a nice blue. That's a gorgeous blue. Okay, so this one is done. On to the next one. And of course, what did I tell you guys? <laughs> that it is so like me to be such a klutz. So this one here is supposed to be 46, not 45, because 45 is not in this set. It is 46, so it's a happy little mistake. <laughs> All right, let's get in to our, the rest of our blues. This one is a violet blue. So we're getting into the bluer colors. Indigo. This one's nice. I love the indigo on the Prismacolors and the watercolors that I made a swatch out of. And blue slate. So this is a brighter blue, kind of like a purplish. It's very similar to the one right on top of it. Just a darker tone of it. 145, where is it? Did I make a mistake again? Hang on, <laughs> give me a second. Did I mess up again? Yes, okay, so this is the 145. I knew this would happen, that is so like me. Okay, so this is the 145, and here is the 144. So I'm just going to have to switch the numbers. Yes, that's a huge difference. We don't wanna make that mistake. So let me fix this off camera, and then we'll continue so that I don't forget that I, these are completely different numbers. All right, so I know a pickier person would have restarted all of this, but I want to save trees and I don't want to waste any more paper because this is the second time I printed this because the first time I hadn't added the chameleons and I wanted to, to just continue. So anyways, this is for personal use and everybody makes mistakes. So we are going, I'm going to be extra careful. I said I was extra careful, but I am <laughs> obviously not extra careful. And let's, I like this one. This is a peacock blue. And the 46 is called Light Aqua. That's pretty. 37. So now I'm, I'm really extra careful. This is aquamarine. And now we're going into our greens. This one is True Green. Definitely not a Ninja Turtle green, so I'm going to have to find the true Ninja Turtle green. 165 is grass green. It's pretty. Very pretty, pretty. So there's quite a bit of green, and the first one is an apple. Well, we started here, but I think most of this row is going to be... This is a nice, I guess a cartoony version of Ninja Turtles. And then we're going into 31 dark green well that is they weren't kidding they really meant dark green so this is really really dark this seems like a good ninja turtle one but i'm pretty sure there's hopefully there's a better one if not i have a ninja turtle green in my copics this one is called chartreuse i've never heard a green called chartreuse before maybe i'm just not exposed <laughs> to colors color names very often and then we have 124 lime peel just double checking, you know, when they say if you burn yourself once, you even blow on ice cream. I don't know if that's an English uh, saying, but it's definitely a saying in Arabic. So, this is 25, spring green. That's a pretty green, too. And now, it's very olivey. What's this one? Oh, dark olive green. How cool is that? So, I wasn't too far off the name. Very olivey. Very delicious. This is a very bright one. Jade green, if that makes sense. It's very bluish, though. Very bluish. So, you guys can definitely see the difference between the color on the marker and the one that's down. It's not that much of a difference, surprisingly. I don't know, I haven't checked all of them, but it's always better to make a chart just in case so that you don't so you don't mess up the colors, because sometimes, especially if you don't do swatches, uh, you might get the wrong color, and then you worked so hard on your picture that you're gonna just gonna really get really disappointed, pretty much, if you just put it down wrong. That's a nice brown. This is a light tan. 
I don't know why they put it up here as opposed to closer to the skin tones. Interesting. Unless I made a mistake, so hopefully I didn't make a mistake on that one. Okay, so now we're going kind of into, I think, grayish colors. They're not entirely gray, but somewhat grayish. So I think first we're going into the sepia. That's odd. The sepia is quite dark. PB. Yeah, this is PB, by the way. It's not supposed to be PN, but PB. 62. That is a really odd sepia. And this one is a light umber. That feels a little more sepia-ish. Although still kind of dark, I would say. Okay, and then this is a dark brown. I'm always double-checking now. <laughs> I'm really double-checking all the time. 100 is a warm gray 20%. How precise is that? And I haven't used grays yet, but I know that grays are widely used in shading for alcohol markers. So this is something I'm going to have to experiment with and play around. This one is a warm gray 50%. So I'm going to have to play around and see the differences in the shading with the warm grays and the cool grays because I know that that's a big difference. This is a warm gray 70%. See, if they weren't that important, I don't think they would have marked the percentage of these grays. So you can see the different shading that you can get with these. And then we have a 108, which is a cool gray. So it's pretty cool to see the difference between the grays. So you can see this one is slightly kind of leaning towards, the, it, is, it is warm, so kind of leaning towards the brownish. This is really leaning towards the bluish colors. I might just spew, be spewing complete nonsense. This is the 20%. I, had, I know nothing about coloring, so I'm just saying what I'm thinking, and I could just be completely off. And this one is a 30% cool gray. Very nice. So you can see the differences in the grays. And then we have the last part, and then there were three blacks, so obviously I'm not going to do all three, but I left some empty spaces just in case I got other ones, but Definitely not going to do three of those. Then we're continuing with the cool gray. This one is the 50% cool gray. And 114. What is Is it still in the cool grays? Yes, this is a 70% cool gray. It almost feels like different grades of chocolate. So you get dark chocolate and different grades. So what's this? And we're still French gray. That, that is new to me. I've never heard of French gray. So... What would be the... I, I obviously the diff, see the difference in colors, but what would be the difference in the purpose of those grays? So, you see, we have, like, all these French grays. So this is a 50%. I am super curious now. I have no idea what French grays are used for. That's a 70%. And in the set of 72, you get three blacks. So in all technicality, you're getting about 69 colors and then three, three black markers. I hope I didn't mess up my math. And of course the black is what it is. So I'm really happy with these colors. They're super saturated. These are exactly the kinds of colors that I love. I really love pop colors. So I can see that my Ninja Turtle colors would kind of vary between these here my Michelangelo would probably be the 16. My Raphael would probably have to be the 4. Donatello, 50. Leo would vary between these two. Okay, so at least I have some of my Ninja Turtle colors also. So I'm really happy with these colors, and I can't wait to use them. So next, let's work on the Copics. We're starting off with some greens, and I think, I think these are my skin tone colors, but again, I don't remember the exact order that I went with, but I'm going to be extra careful this time <clears throat> and hopefully make sure that I took the right colors for the right numbers. So I'm going to put these here. Uh, this one is Spanish olive. So as I mentioned, the problem with the uh, Prisma colors is that they only have the code in front, whereas this one has the code and the color name, which makes it so much easier. See, I almost took the wrong color. <laughs> there we go. Okay, I want lettuce green. YG09. Okay, 
97 is the Spanish green. G29 is my pine green. Oh, that's a really dark green. And now we're going into, I think this is a really light skin tone. So R01 is called pinkish vanilla. Very light color. And this one is light tea rose. R12. Yellow, yellow, yellowish skin pink. That is a weird name. Yellowish. Oh my goodness, that is not a weird name. That is actually my skin tones. I guess I am a yellowish, yellowish skin pink. It's very similar to my skin tone. So that's that's good to know. And then flesh pink, which is very pinky. I love the fact that I have like different shades. And now I'm going to go into uh, the gorgeous brown colors. This one is beige. I've always loved beige colors. Beige and browns have always been some of my favorites. And then E33, this one is sand. Ooh, that's a beautiful color. And for some reason, this is the only, this is the only brown shade, like brown brown shade I have in Copics, unfortunately. So I do have this brown, which is called Burnt Umber, and a lighter sand brown, but I don't have tones in between, so I'm just looking at the prism colors. I don't even have that many. I have a couple of browns, but brown shades, but not too many, so I know that's something I'm going to have to work on. Now we're going into yellows. This one is called Buttercup. Buttercup yellow. This is just purely called yellow. Lightning yellow. Ooh, is that like a Pikachu yellow? Is this my Pikachu yellow? No, nope, not quite, because Pikachu's yellow is somewhat, somewhat leaning towards orangey-ish. FY1. I called it FYI, but fluorescent yellow orange. They're very different. Still no Pikachu. And then we have pumpkin yellow. Pumpkin yellow looks very orangey very orangey so that's a very very michelangelo orange now on to some orangey and reds this one is apricot cadium orange why do i have colors on my copics that's odd it's a gorgeous orange i guess it depends on what what I want for my Michelangelo because all three of them technically could be but I guess it depends on the shading so that's perfect that I have all three colors uh, and then this is a pink deep magenta and of course I didn't put my phone on silence <laughs> and then this one is called salmon red Vermilion, strong red. See, either of these also depends. Nope. Either well, this might work for my for my Raphael. This one is cardinal. And this one is a really light. Pale Aqua, which seems like it could be a really cool color, but I haven't figured out what I would use like very light pastel -y colors for. I have yet to work with that. So this is what this looks like. I guess now we're going to go into darker blues and maybe purples. And Holiday Blue. That's a gorgeous blue. That's kind of like a Leo, Leo-ish blue. Tahitian Blue. Oh, these are both really gorgeous blues. Sky. This one's just simply called Sky. I guess it's kind of like a stormy sky. Royal blue. 
Ooh, that's a beautiful rich blue. And we're coming into purples. So here's a dark purple. It's called Blue Violet. So that's very, very deep. And this is a lighter one, so... Like a dusty, misty one. What's this one called? Prune. And then we have a darker one, for fluor fluorescent, <laughs> fluorescent Dull Violet. Why would it be dull and fluorescent? How could that work at the same time? It doesn't look very dull. That's pretty. I like this. And lavender. That's pretty. And then another last purple one. This one is Wisteria. It reminds me of Sculpey's purple color, which is also called Wisteria, but it's definitely a deeper one than this. So this is a very pale color. Kind of like the blue, but this is a very dusty one too. Very dusty. And now onto the grays slash colors. I didn't know how to categorize them because they were kind of in between grays and colors, so let me show them to you. So the YR30 is called Macadamia, which I guess could be categorized as a yellow, but it could also be categorized as a beige. But if you look at it on paper, it just looks like it's making the paper wet. So it still looks like a gray to me. So that's why I wasn't sure how to categorize them, so I gave them kind of their own little bit. And then YG93 is a grayish yellow, which is a, a funny color also. So it's, it's called a grayish yellow, but for me, to the untrained amateur eye, it looks very green. So I don't know what's up with that. And then this one is Spring Dim Green. And these I don't know who named these colors, but Spring Dim Green looks very much like a green. But at the same time, it's not really a green. It's hard to describe because they kind of, they could go hand in hand on a really nice picture, actually. Now I'm going towards my grays. So this one is a warm gray, which would be kind of cool to compare the warm grays to the warm grays up here. And then a cool gray. And I, didn't, I don't have any in-betweens. And then a toner gray. So kind of like the French grays. I'm not sure what a toner gray is for. So I'm going to... Ooh, that's a very charcoal. And last but not least in Copics, I have black. So obviously I'm missing a lot of colors in-betweens. I think for both, I'm still kind of lacking in browns, unfortunately. But at least that way, it's categorized. So you still see, this one still only just looks like it wet the paper. But I'm sure on a different colored paper, it would look really nice. On to the chameleons. Okay, so for the chameleons, I'm not actually going to do the, the different layers. I'm just going to go straight ahead and color the actual tone, and then I'll figure out the, the gradient. That's the word I was looking for, <laughs> the gradient. I'm not going to do that now. So you can see the difference in the brush. This is technically the brush for the chameleon. So they have the brush side, which is kind of nibby, but then they also have the nib. So the cool part about this is that you can actually make gradients, but I'm just going to categorize the true color as opposed to the gradient for now. And then this is a gray. The colors are very, very pigmented, so it's really cool. Purple grape. Deep violet. Sky blue. This one is royal blue. Blue violet. Aquamarine. Olive green. Spring green. Grass green. Quite a bit of greens. This one is bark, so it's a brown. Just kind of similar to my other browns, so I don't have really too many mid mid browns. Fawn. Ooh, that's a pretty brown. This one is Bisque. <laughs> that's a funny name. Bisque. 
It's a very pinkish tone. This one's more like anime skin tone. This is very pink. Summer Sun. Just this yellow. Warm Sunset. Ooh. A very golden lake. This one is Seville Orange. Oh, that's a very, very rich orange. Hot Cocoa. Bubble Gum. And Crimson Red. So these are the colors that you get in the basic chameleon set, but of course they can be made into gradients, so you have to put them in the colorless blender chamber and they become a gradient. So I guess eventually if I do make any drawing videos, I'll, I'll show you guys how they work. So the gradient is really cool on that. So here are the colors for Prismacolor, and as you can see, the pigments are really, really good. It's super saturated. I really like the colors on these and the Copics which are super popular and super famous now on the, you have to stay keep this in consideration that this is a regular sheet of paper so it's not made for Copics so it's a little grainy compared to the Prismacolors but again I'm not using the right paper for this because this is just for my sample chart and the Chameleons which are gorgeous too but a little grainy kind of like the Copics in terms of the ink on regular paper so I hope you guys enjoyed the process and the colors are absolutely gorgeous super saturated and I can't wait to get coloring I will see you guys next time so I drew this um, I guess you can call him wizard Raphael because I got a really cool book for my birthday and Christmas and I drew this kind of version of Raphael and I thought it was really cool I spent so much time sketching him and then inking him that I got so scared coloring him. So I've been procrastinating coloring him, but then I saw Bailey J suggest this.